101. What's going on guys, it's Greg from ECD and welcome to episode six of Breaking 100. This means there's only one week left until the finale on January 1st, where I'm gonna test and see if I can actually break 100 now. Pretty excited, but this week we've got a good episode for you guys. We're gonna bring ECD pros, Deemer Class, and Ryan Brown in, two of the best shooters in all of across, and then give you guys some tips on form and mechanics. I'm gonna show you guys how you can help out with your own mechanics by filming yourself, and then we're gonna talk about adjusting your stick. So let's get into it. And here's Deemer with a shot score! Oh my gosh! Top corner quick! Brown, that's a two! They went zone and Class breaks it! Knows when Class is on the wing, 10 and white. He's slinging it. It is Brown! Give him another one, Big Q! There's a shot to call! And there's another four! Off the top, I said he had the best shooting stroke in America. Challenge me, someone! Feast session! For the Duke midfielders, Deemer Class has five goals heading into this possession. What's up, guys? So me personally, you know, at RBDC Lacrosse, there's a couple things that we like to think about when you know we're shooting. In addition, you know, to shooting hard and having great power, there's a lot of things that go into being a great shooter. Before we even get to the actual shot, the big thing that we like to focus on is preparing our bodies to receive the ball and getting ourselves in a position that where we can catch and get a shot off quickly. One is catching it loaded. So catching it with our top hand down in that shooting position, ready to step into a shot. Two is being in what we call a closed position where we have our front shoulder, front foot pointed to our target so that our body is turned and we can receive that ball and get right into our backstroke and get that ball out effectively. Now after we catch that ball, everything is gonna be based off of our footwork. So big things we wanna think about. Stepping to our target. The cage is six by six. It's gonna change the angle of our hips from left to right pipe, depending on where we step. So we really like to focus on the front foot. Not as much the hips or the shoulder, we think that's gonna follow. So step to your target on the cage. The last thing we like to touch on is making sure we have a consistent stick path. We want to be able to bring the ball high and low with that same release, which is what's going to add that layer of deception for a goalie. As a shooter, especially a younger one trying to progress through his game, if you constantly feel like you have to bring the ball high and drop your hands to do so, or shoot low and shoot overhand, that's going to be predictable for a goalie as you progress on and on. So for me, when I'm practicing shooting, I love to shoot fast, but in game time situations, I'd rather give up a little speed for a little more accuracy and uh, a quick release. So in order to really help do that, one thing I like to do is when I'm shooting, is really getting a nice draw and getting the stick back behind my head. Not to the point where I can't see the goal anymore, but a nice draw where I can still see my target, make it tough for the goalie, and then I don't keep the stick on the same plane. It's very easy for a goalie to track a ball that's moving on the same plane. We want to change planes when we shoot, whether it's high to low or high to high. We should always focus on coming down on our target, not shooting up or driving or pushing the ball to our, our targets. So one thing that I really pride myself on is be able to shoot the same shots, right-handed and left-handed, and have it all look the same. You know, I'd be, I'm able to shoot the ball 100 miles an hour with my right hand and my left hand. Thing that's helped me be able to do that is going and getting in front of a big mirror and seeing what I exactly do with my right hand and then flip it over to the left hand side and try to do the same. If you don't have a, a big mirror in your house, you can always get a buddy to, to film you or your mom and dad so you can really work on seeing the differences in the technique of what you're doing. So one thing that I definitely need to work on is my shooting form. So what's great now is everyone has a, I should have my cell phone up. Everyone has a cell phone in their pocket and most new cell phones can shoot really good slow motion video. So my phone, Google Pixel, shoots 240 frames a second. If you have a friend who has a newer Android or iPhone, it can shoot slow motion video. So what is great is you don't need a really expensive camera anymore to shoot slow motion and you can have a friend or a buddy, teammate, shoot a slow motion video of you shooting and that really allows you to break down the small minute things in your shooting form that you would never have noticed that you might be doing wrong. So I'm gonna record myself shooting in slow motion and I suggest you guys do the same and you can compare it to the video we have of Deemer or Ryan 
compared to their form and see maybe you need to pick your elbow up or what you can change to make sure your shooting form is dialed in. So when I'm out there shooting and training, it feels like my form is pretty good, but after watching the slow motion, it is excruciatingly clear that my right elbow is in way too tight to my body. So by watching the slow motion, you know, I identify that I gotta get my hands up and out and away from my body to get a little bit more power and leverage. So another thing to think about when you're working on shooting harder and faster is your stick setup. So obviously as you're getting bigger, stronger, faster, you're increasing your rotational speed, uh, you're gonna need more whip. And the reason is that as you're shooting, the further back you're going and the faster the head's moving, the more the ball's gonna wanna fly out. So more whip is gonna help the ball hold in the stick for longer and hold while the stick is moving faster so it doesn't release too early. So you have to line up the amount of whip you have with how fast your stick head is moving to get the release point right. So you gotta think about it like a catapult. So you want the ball to hold into the stick as it's going around until the perfect point when it launches out. And so for this one, I think this is gonna be pretty dialed in for breaking 100. Uh, I've got Vortex, I wanted to keep it all NCAA legal so we've got straight shooting strings. But I'm showing up Vortex which has the diamond transition just to hold the ball right there on the top. Uh, it's a really high pocket. So this has a lot of whip, maybe just a little bit more than I play with in a game, but I'm used to a lot of whip. So by adding that whip in that high pocket, it's gonna hold on the ball a lot better than I normally would. So that's the end of the episode. Thanks for watching. We've got exactly one week, January 1st, right in the new year, 2018, we're gonna launch episode seven, the final speed test. Uh, break 100 and I'm pretty pumped so stay tuned for next week and thanks for watching